So did you know you can actually connect your Synology NAS to a Windows server? Actually have some storage on your Synology NAS, make it into a LUN, a block-based LUN, and then share that with a Windows server. And then in Windows, you can mount that hard drive and see maybe a D drive, an E drive, an F drive. That's actually the block-based storage of a LUN on your NAS. This is great, especially if you wanna say move from an old server to a new server. You don't have to migrate all the data, you just disconnect the LUN, the iSCSI connection between the NAS and the Windows server, connect it to your new one, and then the data's there, right there, same drive letter, same everything else. It's absolutely great. Hey, so before we do get into this, you're watching this on a tech YouTube channel, and thank you so much for stopping by. If you are new, please do subscribe, click on the button on the bell, that way you don't miss out on any of the videos that we are releasing. All right, now let's get onto the demo. You are gonna need two things for this. You're gonna need a Windows server and you need, of course, your Synology NAS. I'm doing this on a six bay 1621 plus NAS, but you can do this on a different, smaller Synology NAS or on a larger one, as long as you are running a newer-ish version of the DSM software, which is of course the operating system that runs on your Synology NAS. All right, that's it. Let's go now into the demo. Now, if you're a little bit confused around the differences between iSCSI, between NFS, the differences between a SAN or a NAS, we're now gonna give you a little bit of an overview around the differences of each. There are differences between NAS and SAN, one being file-based, one being block-based, NFS, iSCSI, let's talk a little bit about that. Now, a lot of you know a little bit about storage networks. You've got two main things. If you're talking about a corporate environment, a NAS and a SAN. Now, there is a difference. You've maybe heard of those two terms. A NAS is a network attached storage. That's what it stands for. And a SAN is a storage area network. Now, hey, they sound fairly similar. Let's first define what a NAS is. So NAS, network attached storage. This is a storage device and inside of these physical units, they are containing hard drives. This storage device has a lot of connections on the back of it. You're gonna have ethernet connections. You're gonna maybe have some USB connections. You're gonna have some other connections that let you connect NASs together if you wanna sort of do expansions and all of that. And that's really, really cool. This is what's called a file-based solution, a file-based system. A SAN is a block-based solution. So they're the two main things that are different there. File-based, uh, we are now talking here the same way that a standard file server would work. If you've got a whole bunch of files, you've got a whole bunch of data, and that's gonna be using some protocols in the background. Those protocols are gonna be SMB or SIFS, KIFS share. It could be NFS or an AFP format. So there's various protocols, but let's just focus, for example, on, a, on SMB. You set it up, you configure a RAID, you set it up with RAID so that there's multiple levels of redundancy. If a disk fails and you won't lose data, you're gonna create storage pools and then create essentially shares on your NAS shares that you are then sharing out to the network. You're gonna add particular permissions onto that so that specific users or, spe or specific computers on a network can access it. Now, SAN, what is a SAN? Storage Area Network. A SAN is block-based as we said. So unlike a NAS where you create your RAID and your storage pool and then you create your shares which are SMB or SIF shares, right? So you can share on the network over that protocol. On a SAN, you're also creating your RAID and some storage pools, but now you're creating what's called LUNs. Stands for logical unit number. We talked about the SIF share and the SMB share and NFS and these other protocols on the NAS side. Well, on the block side, you're gonna have iSCSI or fiber channel. You've also got fiber channel over ethernet, but we're gonna be just focusing on the iSCSI and the fiber channel here. And what you're gonna be doing is when you create a LUN, on a SAN, you give it a protocol. What protocol do you wanna be running over? Let's say you wanna be running over a fiber channel network. Well, a fiber channel network is very, very different to a standard ethernet network. If you think about a standard ethernet switch where you're plugging in all of your network cables, sort of the same. You may have a fiber channel network which has a fiber channel switch with fiber channel cables running into it instead of a network cable. You can also get a fiber channel card for your computer, for your server, or you can use iSCSI and iSCSI can run over an ethernet. So a normal network cable, it's actually gonna be passing an iSCSI packet protocol over that ethernet cable. And all I'm doing is on the SAN, I'm initiating my LUN to be a iSCSI protocol. When you're creating your LUN, you may be able to actually say, I only want these computers to be able to get access 
to that LUN. And then those servers will have to have a iSCSI initiator set up and then they can actually go and talk on the block based LUN on the SAN and then connect to it that way. We're gonna be using a DS1621 Plus NAS. This particular NAS is a six bay NAS. So let's now go ahead and start the demo. Let's click on the left top menu. Now, if you don't already have this configured, you need to go and create yourself a volume, which acts as the container where you can go and build your iSCSI LUNs and then share them out on your network. So if you haven't done this, you'll have to go and obviously create yourself all of your disks, we're gonna assume that you've configured all of this, that you've got RAID, that you've got your storage pool, that you've got a volume. On the top left-hand corner, click on the main menu and go down to SAN Manager. And what we need to do from within here is create what's called a LUN, so a logical unit number. We did touch on that just a little bit just before. This is of course block-based. And what we are doing in here is actually going and creating the container, the block container, that we will then share with our Windows server. And then our Windows server using the iSCSI initiator can connect to it, mount it to that Windows server, and then you access it and use it just like you can any other drive. Now let's go into the iSCSI area and you'll see that currently I've got an iSCSI target already and that's copying to a ESXi, which is a uh, VMware environment, but I'm gonna now select create and create a new iSCSI target. So right here, I'm gonna say target windows. Next, I'm gonna create a new LUN. I'm gonna give this LUN a name. So let's just call it LUN windows. So of course, LUN being our container, my windows LUN. What's the volume that I wanna create it? Let's do it on volume two. And how big do we want this to be? Of course, this is gonna be physically mounted on our Windows server. So maybe we wanna do it 100 gig. We then got thick and thin provisioning. Thick being that you will allocate the entire 200 gig to this particular LUN and it'll use it all up straight away. While thin, well, you only allocate theoretically the whole 200, but it'll only use that capacity as it needs to. So there are differences between thin and thick. So you choose the one that works best. If you are good at monitoring, if you're good at going and checking the capacity, then you could possibly leave it as thin, as long as you're making sure that things do not grow too quickly. While if it's not going to be monitored and you just want it to just do its thing and you know exactly how much capacity you want to allocate, then just click on thick provisioning. For our case, we're just gonna select thick provisioning. Here is a summary of what's gonna happen and we can click on done. Okay, now there is a separate initiator set up and it says ready right here. So within my Windows Server, I'm gonna go into my control panel over here and I'm gonna select iSCSI initiator. It's right there inside our control panel. And now I need to actually search for my NAS. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in my IP address of my Synology NAS and say quick connect. You'll see that straight away, it's actually found two iSCSI IQNs. These are those unique numbers. Now let's go and make sure that I'm connecting to the right one. The one that I want is called target one. The other one was called lab demo default target. So if we go back to our windows, there it is, target one. Select that one and click on connect. It's now connected. Login is succeeded. Done. So that is now connected right in there. So now I've established the connection. I've now got a full connection over iSCSI, but now you can't really use it just yet. I've just established the connection, but now we physically want to use that data, that LUN, and actually map it to a hard drive, to an actual letter so that I can see it within my Windows server. You'll also see that on the discovery tab, it's actually found the IP address right there. It's listed. So we can now get out of the iSCSI initiator. We now wanna go into administrative tools and open up computer management. If you're familiar with how to do this already, we're now gonna go into the disk management, which is the area where you control all of your disks. And if everything has worked, we now have this partition listed in there. It's not allocated, it's currently offline. And that is my 100 gig, which is matching the 100 gig LUN that we set up right here. I'm gonna right click on it, say online. We're gonna initialize the disk. Here it is, you can create your relevant partition. And now I create a new simple volume of the full 100 gig if that's what you wanna use. 
and I'll give it a relevant letter. Maybe we'll give it a G drive right there. Next. Yep, we're happy with all of this. And we can maybe call it Lundisk. And finish. Of course, that will go and format. It's healthy. I can now open up my Windows Explorer. And there it is. There is my G drive. So did you get this working? Why don't you let us know in the comments below whether it was yay, successful or nay, unsuccessful. Please do subscribe if you are new and you are not subscribed already. Really appreciate that. And like this video if you did like it. And that's it. Thank you so much. Tune in for the next video. We're going to be talking about all things tech. Thanks again. See you next time.